Greetings everyone and welcome back to the bench. On the bench today we have JAT 501 audio amplifier boards. These were submitted by a viewer. I did mention that I wanted to make a video first before having boards submitted but he already made them up and um, so I said why not. So back when I had my PO box he sent me the boards and uh, pretty happy with the boards. There are a few changes. I think he said he has already made some changes to the board. These are kind of preliminary. And he also supplied a populated board. Look at that. Very nice work. Got the big TO64 transistors. I mounted it to a heat sink. So I could do some tests. But, yeah. Very happy. I asked him if he wanted to go ahead and uh, handle producing the boards. And uh, he said, sure. So what I want to talk about today is what I would consider the official design for the JAT501 amplifier board layout. Of course you have to have your grounds and your supply rails right. Uh, pretty happy with the grounds. You know, this plane here is the power ground, and this is small signal ground. And, you know, it surrounds the input stage, so that's very nice. Helps shield that. And one of the problems using these fast transistors is the oscillation issues I had. I found I had to get the capacitors pretty close to the output stage. And these are more than good enough. You know, right there, they bypass the output stage to quell that high-frequency oscillation. So, yeah, the uh, supply bypass caps are right in a very good position. I'm happy with that. You know, the board layout. You got all the power stuff over here. And there is one issue, though, the uh, bringing power in near the small signal side of the amp. So that's uh, one change I think we should need to make. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, this is the negative feedback takeoff point. That's good. Don't really need to do anything with that other than turn off my air conditioner. Stay tuned. On the bottom of the board, these planes are the supply rails. This is one, this is the other. I don't remember which is which. I'd have to look at it. But one issue is, you know, you're coming in through fuses here. This one goes up to this side. Let's see here. So this would be the uh, positive rail, I guess. I'm trying to look. Hang on a second. Yeah, that's the LED. Yeah, that's the, uh, this is the positive rail here. But anyhow, you have all that current flowing across the board like this and under the small signal parts. And you're picking off the rails here for those input stages. And, well, the input stage and the voltage amplification stage, wherever it needed it the rail with those high currents are passing through now these are really wide foil areas so yeah it's probably not a huge deal but what you should do is I think this is the bypass cap if it's not I'll just use it as an example so you need to pick off uh, right here for example you need the supply rail at this point and this one too, what you could do is, you know, cut a section from that capacitor and run it out there. That way it has its own quiet, unperturbed path where no high current signal is going to flow. However, I think it would be much better if the power was brought in 
over in this area. And I'm not sure. Yeah, it's a really nice design. I don't really want to screw it up too much. But if this could be shifted over, maybe put that stuff here. I think that would be better. I did put the fuses on the board. That's okay. I wasn't sure if I was going to do that. However you do it, each amplifier has to have its own supply rail fuses. So if you put it on the power supply board, each amplifier that that power supply board powers should have its own set of fuses to protect it. So yeah, I'm neither here nor there with the fuses on the board, but yet yeah, it's a nice touch. As far as the size of this board, it's nice sized. I wouldn't go bigger though. It might be possible to shave it down a little bit, but I don't want to make it so compact that all the components are you know squished together too tightly. I yeah, I, if if you could squeeze it down fine, but I wouldn't do it if you have to squeeze these components any closer together. Really happy with the labeling. It shows the part number from the schematic and the part value. Um, this should show the that there's a coil as well. And uh, I'm kind of up in the air if we should also have a place for the coil. You know, that would take extra room. But if you wanted to have a coil instead of wrap it around the resistor, you know, that could be an option as well. Another thing I would like to see is some sense lines added. You need one at the output and one on each end of the output transistor emitter resistor. So one at this point, one at this point, and one at this point at the output. What that would do is allow you to add an optional board, a delay turn on board a short circuit detection board if you uh, really wanted to have that or not it's up to you like i said there's no current limit circuit on this amplifier and for good reasons i don't want a current limit circuit now, if i was making this for the consumer market yeah i would consider short sir or a uh, current limit circuit but i don't want to get into it here there's Good reasons why a lot of do-it-yourself amp designers forego those. Another thing I would like to see, you did do it at some positions. You see there's extra holes for this capacitor. That allows you to place a capacitor that might have a different lead spacing. And uh, you see here there's some extra holes for this capacitor here. So he has a pretty large film input capacitor, decoupling capacitor. But in my case, I use these capacitors. And uh, they have a 1, well, a 10 millimeter lead spacing. However, I really can't use them without bending the leads in some funky way. So it would be nice to have some more holes for that to fit. Also, these capacitors here, see this one does not fit because it's meant for a larger size capacitor that's used here. Now, the reason for doing that, it you know, just allows you to select different components. You know, it might have the same value, but different lead spacing. You don't really have to worry about that with these large resistors. They're going to be pretty large. And... Um, there's some room to bend the leads a little bit. But mainly these capacitors is what you have to worry about. The transistors and things, of course, not really an issue there. Foil thickness. I don't know what these are. This is for a power amplifier, which can, you know, in certain situations, need to conduct quite a bit of current through the traces which the way these are 
set up. They're pretty thick. But I know you can get these boards in different foil thicknesses. So I I don't want, like I say, I don't know what these are, but I wouldn't go with the thinnest stuff. I would maybe step it up a little bit. You could uh, have clear traces without the masking where you can add some solder. You know, this is probably fine as it is. They're pretty short. But yeah, just something I'm thinking of. Last but not least, and I don't know how we're going to work this out yet. If we do have kits, you know, somebody distributes this. I'm not going to be the one distributing this stuff because, you know, it's just time consuming. And, uh, you know, with my other work and everything, I don't have time to do that. Whoever does it should be able to make some money. And, you know, I don't want the reputation of my design ruined by cheap Chinese parts, you know, counterfeit parts that may fail. Uh, the parts should be authenticated. You know, if you buy it from DigiKey, they're, they're gonna, probably going to be fine. DigiKey or Mauser, one of the larger suppliers. But, yeah, if you build the board yourself or we decide to come out with a kit or something... Uh, it's got to use authentic parts. Well, I guess that about covers it. I don't know if he wants me to mention his name. I won't say his name, but yeah, I really appreciate your efforts and uh, your desire to work with me on this. Appreciate what you've done here, sending me the boards and the uh, populated board here. If anybody has comments or saw something I missed or I should discuss, mention it down in the comments. It's, you know, I'm a uh, hobbyist here, so I'm, I'm not perfect. I make mistakes, so, you know, if you see something I should be considering, let me know. When the board designer and I get together and discuss the layout and everything, um, we might be able to use that information. One more thing I would like to say is when well, I drug my feet on this thing, and it's really nice to you know, finally push ahead on this. But I'm kind of thinking of a pie in the sky idea here. I'm thinking about collaborating on projects, you know, designing some stuff, maybe coming up with an idea and having somebody else design it, somebody else do the boards, or, you know, stuff like that. Like, a switch mode power supply I'm thinking of. I think Eddie Ahu over on KISS Analog channel mentioned something about a collaboration on something. Uh, yeah, maybe a switch mode power supply. I have a couple different, two or three different switch mode power supply ideas. I'm not an expert in designing those things, so you know he's the expert in the business, so I can lean on him for expertise on that. I don't know if he wants to design boards or not or, you know, come up with the schematic and, and have somebody else lay it out. You know, it's just an idea of all kinds of amplifiers and useful circuits, power supplies and things like that um, we can collaborate on. I don't know when this is going to happen. I'm kind of starting to get busy with work. I squeeze in what I can. So, yeah, I, what do you think? Is this something you guys would be interested in? Just let me know. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Thanks for watching. Well, here's Snickers. I got really worried around Memorial Day weekend. The Friday before the weekend, his legs got really weak, his back legs. And I was pretty upset. I had problems sleeping one night. I was thinking I'd have to take him in and have him put down after the weekend but uh, he stabilized uh, it's been almost a couple weeks now and he's stabilized he's eating and using the litter box okay as long as he can get around okay I'm not too concerned but you know it's just getting old I don't know how long he's gonna be with me anymore but here see, why don't you walk for us Nick and uh, I don't know if you can see 
a little bit wobbly on his back legs. <laughs> he doesn't want to walk right now. He wants me to feed him. You want some food? Hey. You can't hear very well. You almost can't see. You probably can only see light in very large shapes and things. And living with an animal, you just know how they function. And I can tell. They can barely see. You can hear a little bit. You hungry? No, ah, the magic words. Come on, let's go get some food. Let's get some food. Come on. Come on. He's all right now. You can see a little bit of weakness in his legs. <laughs>